All right, welcome to period one, statistics. We're going to talk about the behavior of graphs today. We're going to focus on these two objectives, talking about where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, as well as finding local minima or maxima. All right, that will be the exit ticket today uh, that I'll be grading is can you read, basically can you read a graph? All right, that's the goal today. You know how to read books with words, letters, sentences, but can you read a function that's a graph? So here's a quick little summary of where things are increasing or decreasing. First thing is you should always read a function from left to right. So read from left to right. And that shouldn't be a problem because that's how you read books from left to right. All right? Yes, at least unless you're doing Mandarin, that's a different direction. So, and Arabic, I think? Uh, Hebrew as well? Japanese as well? See, look, all these languages are different than ours. Now, if we read it from left to right, if you read this from left to right, think about the x values. Think about the x values. If you look, the, the thing that confuses students is the arrow. The arrow is pointing this way, so most students want to think about going that way. But actually, you're going to be moving this way. All right? And if you move your finger like this, you're moving up, which means it's increasing. All right? So the values for x on where it's increasing is negative infinity all the way until negative 2. So you would write increasing negative infinity to negative 2. See that right there? So that's where they're starting. It's increasing. Notice they use interval notation. That's the parentheses. Parentheses today. All parentheses today. Where's the x value where it stops increasing? The x value where it stops increasing. Now it's going to become decreasing. So I don't care about the y. I mean, I care about the y because I need to figure out where it changes. But I don't care about that when I write down my interval. So, you know. Okay. So now we switch to decreasing from negative 2 until positive 2. So you'll notice it says decreasing negative 2 to positive 2. The U means union. So that's going to be, nope, not Soldier Boy. The next one here is going to be from 2 to infinity. 2 to infinity is the other part that's increasing. So if you have multiple notations that you need, you put that U. So if there would have been a third one, be another U and then another one. Okay? okay? Remember, I, I don't write about the Y. I care about the Y, right? The Y tells me where it changes, but I only write about the X's. Increase again is 2 to infinity. Because you're thinking about the X values. All right? Can we try another one? All right. Come back to this. Let's try another one. So I want to write down increasing and decreasing. OK, so first thing I do is I start at the very left part of the graph, all right, which is over here. And it says the arrow is going this way. But that's not how I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it going this way. And if you follow my finger, you see that my finger is decreasing. So I'm going to write down negative infinity, comma, and it stops decreasing right here. What's the x value? 1. So I have a comma 1. Should I do it again? Let me do it again. Because you're going to have to do this and get a grade for it. What's up? Somebody's phone? That's fine. I see, it's good. Is that your phone? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's somebody else did it. Yeah. <laughs> no, not necessarily. Right? It could be. It could be decreasing, like down here, right? And that'd be going towards positive infinity. It's all about where the x values are. The reason I started here is because this is going to go this way forever, which is going this way forever. So if you read it from left to right, it's negative infinity to 1. Yes? So what if it doesn't stop like, on a point? It's like when you 
For an x value? I will make it so it always stops at an x value. Like, so you won't have to worry about decimals. Ooh, there's a crack on it. Yeah, I figured. That was my fault. I'm not going to pay for your phone. OK. Let's go to the next part. We stopped at 1, and now we're increasing until this point, which is the x value of 3. So increasing is going to start from 1, 3. Okay, well, sorry, sorry. Then it decreases again from this point to this point, which is 3 to 4. So notice I'm putting a u and then 3 every time. 3, 4. What is the u for? Union. The union. It means or. This one or this one. Right? There could be multiple u's. There could be however many you need. 3, 4, the x value is where it's decreasing. See how it's decreasing on this part? So that's 3 and 4, decreasing from 3 to 4. And, uh, 1 and 3 was increasing, right? From here to here, it's increasing. So that's 1 to 3. It's all about the x values, right? Was there a question, Pablo? Uh, What? Sure. Okay. Just more writing. Okay. Last part. We stopped at four, right? Stopped at four. So now it's four, and it's going this way forever, which I really don't care about that way. I care about this way forever. So that means it's going to be four to infinity for increasing. Questions? Questions about this? No. <laughs> yes, Natalie. Okay. Parentheses. parentheses, always parentheses. So, like, remember how yesterday the circles you use parentheses because it's open, but it's not included? We don't have any closed or open points today, so it's always going to be parentheses. When you do increasing or decreasing, you don't care as much about uh, like included or not included, like the open and, and closed stuff. Uh, we care more about what x values is it increasing or decreasing. So I, re I recognize that we're kind of ignoring that. OK? Now let's talk about, yes, Giuseppe. Yeah, just means or. Like just, it means like, hey, here's where it's increasing, or here is also where it's increasing. It's the union. The and would have been the other way. Remember thing about our probability unit? Right, the U meant or, and the this one meant a, or and. <laughs> Keep going, man. Just do another U, and then. Yep. Very welcome. All right, let's talk about maxima and minima. And the reason we say local, all right, the reason it's local is because when you have the maximum or minimum value for a function, it's called the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. But there are, let's, the way I think of it is like little tiny minimums and maximums that are happening always when you look at these functions. Wherever you move, wherever you move from increasing to decreasing, you get what we call a local maximum. Whenever you move from decreasing to increasing, you get a local minimum. Okay? So that's what we're going to find right now on this example. All right, so let's start here at the very beginning. Yes? Well, we we'll only care about the x values, and it's where it changes. It's in, called an inflection point when you change the direction of increasing or decreasing. It's called the inflection point, so no, it will never be infinite. So, like an example, would be like would be, so we're decreasing, right, to increasing. So here, at this x value, we have a y value of negative 1. That is, that point right there is called a local minima. It goes by the y? goes by the x, but I'm just putting the point there. So you're going to write x equals 1. There's a local minimum at x equals 1 because we went from decreasing to increasing. The, the reason they put local is because they don't want to put absolute 
because absolute means it has to be the minimum of your function. In this case, this is the minimum of my function. It's the lowest one. We're going to have another local minima here that's not the absolute minimum. There are lower y values other places. Exactly, whenever it changes, from increasing to decreasing, decreasing or vice versa. So let's keep going. You see how now we've switched to increasing, and we get up here, and now we go back to decreasing. So at this point, there's another inflection change. But you see how that's kind of, it's going from increasing to decreasing. It's like the top of the hill, and then you come down the other side, that's your maxima. But because it's not the absolute maxima, we say local. So we have a local maxima at x equals 3. Can we have one? Absolutely. We're about to have another minima. No, just comma this time. Comma. So now we're back to decreasing. We switch back to increasing here. So we have another local minima at x equals 4. I put the wrong one, Bobby. There we go. And that's it, right? Because we cannot, we don't have any more inflection, right? This isn't going to be like magically coming back down. So that's why infinity can never be one. Yes, because it has to be where it changes, and it will change somewhere in your graph. Is minimum like whenever it's going down? Think of it, I guess what I would do is just kind of like if you could zoom in, if you could zoom in on just this part of the graph. What does that point look like? Is it the highest point or the lowest point? And it's the lowest point, so that's why it's a minima. All right, that's what I, I think helps for most people's brains. Everybody good? Questions on this? Okay, so you're about to stand up, find a spot, do this one, increasing, decreasing, and minima, and then sit down to do your exit ticket. All right? Boom! Yeah. Oh, my God.